Burundi after independence. The country now known as Burundi has a somewhat similar history to Rwanda. Burundi, like Rwanda, was first under German rule and then Belgian rule after the Germans lost. There were two main nationalist parties in Burundi, the Union for National Progress, APRONA, which reached out to include prominent Hutus and became the colonies or the country's dominant political force. But on October 13, 1961, just two weeks after Abrona's leader, Prince Louis Wagosore, became prime minister, he was assassinated. Hutu representatives were pushed out of Abrona the party and then fell out among themselves. After independence, Mwamwi Mwambusa IV took personal control of government and tried to reconcile the Hutu and Tutsis by including representatives from both tribes. However, on January 15, 1965, Prime Minister Pierre Ndengadunwe, a Hutu, was assassinated. In the pi parliamentary elections in May, Hutu candidates won 23 out of the 33 seats, but Mwami was appointed, who was a Tutsi, as Prime Minister. This, of course, angered the Hutu. So Mwami fled to Switzerland, and a group of Tutsis managed to gain control of government and purge the Hutu from the army. The Tutsi leader, Colonel Michael Mekombero, created a government of public safety in July of 1966, which was an alliance with the Mwami's son and successor, Ntare V. Mikumbera's tra transformed the nation into a one-party state, encouraged the Tutsi to take revenge on the Hutu. There was a Hutu uprising which killed 10,000 Tutsis in 1972 before the army put it down. And after the army put down that rebellion, they embarked on a campaign of selective genocide in which they killed all Hutu with any formal education. During that time, approximately 200,000 Hutu died and another 100,000 fled to neighboring countries. In 1976, when Colonel Jean-Baptiste Bagaza overthrew Mikumbero, he was a Tutsi, but he adopted a more conciliatory policy. He abolished the feudal services that Hutu peasants owed Tutsi landlords and transformed some land to Hutu ownership. He also encouraged the Hutu refugees to return and reclaim their land, and he brought some Hutu into the government. A number of Hutu won seats in the National Assembly in the election of 1982. And at the same time, anyone suspected of stirring up Hutu discontent was clamped down. Bagaza won re-election in the same year in an unopposed election, but his associate major Pierre Buyoya overthrew him two years later. After Buyoya had been in office for only 11 months, another Hutu uprising resulted in the killing of another 600 Tutsis. Buyoya sent in the army, which killed 20,000 Hutu, and sent a further 60,000 across the border into Rwanda. So the conflicts between the Hutu and Tutsis continued, and in December 1990, Aprona approved a draft national unity charter intended to abolish any ethnic discrimination and laid the groundwork for democratic constitution. Buyoya created a constitutional commission in March 1991 that released a draft document in early 92. The document was approved by 90% of Burundians in a referendum, and the new constitution permitted multiple parties so long as they were not ethnically, regionally, or religiously based. But militant Hutus staged repeated raids in 1991 and 1992, while radical Tutsi soldiers attempted to derail any kind of reforms. Nevertheless, Buyoya kept the transition to democracy on track, and when elections were held in June 1993, Buyoya lost the presidency in a surprise upset to a Hutu, Melchior Ndadaye.
the Dias Party, the Front for Democracy in Burundi, Frodebu, gained 80% of the seats in the National Assembly. However, Tutsi soldiers killed Ndadaye four months later, and another bloody ethnic violence broke out once more. Tens of thousands of people died in the process, and the National Assembly elected Cyprian Ntarimira president in January of 1994. He was also killed three months later in the same plane that crashed and killed the Rwandan president, Habramana as the two returned from a conference in Tanzania, which was supposed to end the violence. This intensified the violence, and Burundi also went through some of the same struggles that Rwanda went through. In September of that year, representatives of the major party worked out an interim power-sharing agreement under Sylvester Ntibantu Nganya, who was the speaker of the National Assembly and who became the temporary president upon Ntarimira's death. The two major parties, Frodebu and Aprona, maintained a very shaky collaboration well into 1995, while trying to fight all the divisions that were going on in the country. That's just a brief history of some of the struggles that Burundi was going through at the same time as of wonder in the 90s. Please be sure to subscribe to Global Black History. Thank you for watching.